Hey guys, Ryan Lutz here. Thanks for stopping by. Today, I wanna to go over one of my favorite type of track conditions, the bumpy, rough tracks. So tracks that get blown out and just really test man and machine and their full capabilities. So I really love the rough tracks. I call them the old school style. Think of old school PNBs in Unadilla, Georgia. Think of the old Silver State in Boulder City. I mean, these tracks got rough. And I always felt like I excelled really well at these tracks. I feel like there's, you know, just a couple drivers that really have different driving styles on these type of tracks, but that excel when the tracks get rough. You know, you think of Jared Tebow, his pinpoint, putting the car exactly where it needs. He's got that motocross mentality. He knows where that car needs to go. and He does awesome on rough tracks. And then you think of Ryan Mayfield, where he, when you watch him, he keeps his speed. He just keeps going wider and wider and wider on his lines, avoiding a lot of the bumps and going around them and he can excel with that. You see that at the Silver State currently at the DNCs, he does awesome at that. So those are two guys that I really watch as far as like how they drive on the rough tracks. And then today I just wanna show you kind of how I set up my car, my thought process when the tracks do get rough and kind of what I, I try to do. So first things, uh, you're, you're looking at a track, normally when a track gets rough, it's normally a softer track. It's normally a little bit loamier and so, uh, conditions are a little softer. You can generally run a little bit softer tire because of that. And that's kind of the main direction we're going to talk about, but I will try to talk about at the end uh, if the track is higher bite and rough. But to start off, a normal rough track that's a bit on the uh, softer side. And so first things I'll think of is like dips. If I'm going to this track or if the track's progressively getting uh, more blown out while I'm there, I'm thinking about going down in diffs from my standard setup. So say my standard setup is like a 775 or 773, something like that, front, center, rear, on a really blown out track. First things I'll do is like really drop that center diff. So that's going to help give up energy to the front end. So when you, when you hit a bump, instead of it like pushing over it and getting upset possibly, that center diff being lighter will give up that energy to the front end, like with the rear end hits. And I feel like it just helps it go through the bumps a little bit better. So definitely dropping that center diff is one of the first things that I'll do. Going down to five or on the Kyosho, uh, an option part that we have is the 1218 gearing versus our standard 1020 gearing. So the TKI-3 actually comes with the 1218 in the center. And this is the kind of track that I really feel that that excels at is these 1218s. So I don't know if you can totally see it, but the little sun gears a little bit smaller and the little um, spider gears compared to the, the 1020s. So the teeth are just a little bit less contact. And what it ends up doing in the diff itself is it'll make the diff action a lot smoother. And so you can actually run a heavier oil, but it's gonna feel softer. So in a, with the 1218 gears, you can run 10,000 in the center and it'll feel like four or 5,000 with the 1020 gears. So, and then also just because of its smooth, how it is smoother and how it kind of gives up that energy as you're hitting stuff, I really feel like it excels when the tracks are looser and when the tracks are rougher. And also that lighter feel and that smoother feel as it goes through its whole action, I feel like that helps with off power steering as well. So if the track's looser, it can really help you uh, still have good steering on those slower speed sections. And then also the other thing to consider with the Kyosho is uh, now our TKI-3 comes with the small center diff cup in the center, but the original larger center diff cup is also an option to go back to for rougher tracks. Uh, I do feel like that does help a little bit with the rough track handling as well. So it's good to have those options and things that you can uh, kind of adjust. So next we'll talk about shocks. So whenever you go to a new track, you know, seasons change, everything else, temperature is different. Uh, you wanna make sure you have the right oil in your shocks, no matter what piston you're running. Uh, you can't just walk up to somebody and say, what oil are you running? Because it depends what piston you're running and it depends what temperature is outside and so many factors. So I'm gonna show you really quickly a quick thing that I do just to see if I'm in the ballpark of where I wanna be for the shocks. So no matter where I go, uh, I can just work the suspension like this. And what I wanna see is when I'm working it, I want the tires to basically stay on the ground. You can see right here, they're popping off the ground pretty easily and they're not really rebounding quick enough. So for this condition right now, I'm in a 43 degree garage, so it's pretty cold. And this setup is from what I ran at my last race where it was in the 60s to 70 degrees. So as you can see, it thickened up a lot. I definitely wanna be going down in shock oil for these conditions. And then you can see the same thing for the rear, kind of work the suspension. 
You see the rear is closer. So the rear with how it is, um, I would only probably go down like 50 CST. But the front with how it was reacting and how the front's really popping up and not staying on the ground, I'd probably go down 100 CST. And then the other thing you can consider if the track is a rougher track, if it is a looser track, that looser track, when you land off of jumps and whatnot, there's give. The surface is giving way to the tire a little bit. And so that also can help you and allow you to run a softer shock setup, softer oil, softer spring, because you have a little bit more of that give. You're not gonna get as much dumping action in the corners, and so you can get away with a softer setup and help it handle the bumps better. Also help you get some more of that weight transfer that you're gonna need to gain grip on the looser surface. So, uh, and then let me show you really quick. I have my e-buggy here with a bit of a lighter setup in the front. So let's see what it feels like. So that's better. So look at that. So the tires basically are staying on the ground there as I'm working it. Now, if it gets to the point where it's like hotter outside now and you're working it as fast as you can and you can't get the tires to pop off the ground a little bit, then possibly you're too thick for the conditions. So that's your other consideration there. But I feel like for this cold weather that I'm sitting in right now and a, a rough track that I'm going to, that that's going to be a really good starting place for me. It, it'll barely pop up if I go fast. I feel like that's going to be perfect. On the rear, the rear has a little bit more of a pop. I could probably get away with going about 50 CST lighter in the rear and I can probably get away with that. But it's definitely a good starting point. So. Hopefully that gives you a ballpark. Any track you go to anywhere, you can get a quick gauge if your oil is in the right ballpark. So make sure to write down what oil you're running in your shock so you know, so you know how to adjust it. So next we can also talk about springs. Uh, the Kyosho, we have the new 1.6 millimeter diameter coils. So we only have two different options in that coil size and the black and the brown. The brown's a little bit softer. On a looser track again, you can go a little bit softer. And I might end up doing that this upcoming week uh, if the track does completely get blown out like I expect it to. And then pistons and oil. So standard setups, you know, you have like eight hole 1.3 and then you have like five hole 1.5. Those are kind of my two that I go between. If the track's looser, I generally graduate or go to the five by 1.5s. I feel like uh, in, in all the corners, it allows it to have a little bit more of a roll, a little bit deeper of a roll. And I feel like that gives me the weight transfer that I feel like I want to try to get a little bit more of that grip. I also feel like they handle the, the rough a little bit better. Um, however, if the grip does come up, I will transition back to the 813s. I, I feel like it, it kind of keeps the car a little bit flatter and a little bit more stable. We'll get to that later. So for right now, I'm doing like a 514 in the front, 5015 in the rear, and that's kind of like my go-to for a rougher, looser track. Uh, next thing, now we'll go beyond shocks, is we can talk about like sway bars. So again, uh, lighter sway bars. You can drop sway bars from normal. If my normal is like 2324. I would go say to a 2223. I kind of keep that same 1 tenth or 2 tenth difference front to rear for my personal driving. But I could even go as low as like 2122 I've done before. So that's about the lowest that I've gone. And again, this, if the track's loose and you're trying to get a little bit more grip, that's just going to allow you to have a little bit more roll in your suspension, a little bit more weight transfer, a little more you know, weight on that outside tire. It's going to help you get that grip, hopefully, that you need to get around those corners and improve lap times. Uh, next, we have like a drive shaft angle, so something that's often overlooked, but the angle of the drive shaft in the rear of your car is something to consider. Uh, the more forward it is, uh, that's going to support the rear more in the rear, you know, on throttle. However, if you hit bumps, it might upset the car more and actually make it like buck up more when you hit bumps. So trying to straighten that out could actually help out a little bit, especially on power going through bumps. Uh, next, we have like anti-squat, same principle, more anti-squat. So if your arm is kicked up more in the rear, that's going to be better kind of off power through the bumps, whereas having it actually flatter is going to be a little bit better on power through the bumps. So kind of decide where you're having issue. If you're, if you're on throttle when the car is bucking up really bad, possibly consider running less anti-squat. If it's kind of more your off power under braking or something where you're having issues, you know, maybe try a little bit more. And then kick up on the front as well. So same thing, more kick up on the front. So the A block being higher or the B block being lower is going to make it absorb bumps better. It's gonna kind of let the front absorb it better. It's also gonna transfer more weight under braking. On a loose track though, that could be a good thing. It get you a little bit more weight to that front end to help you get that steering that you want. Next we have camber. So I'll think about camber. 
So more negative camber, more cambered in. That should hopefully, you know, going through corners, let it skip over uh, bumps more. It won't catch the edges of the tire as bad. So consider running a little bit more static negative camber. And then along with camber, you kind of have your camber gain. So your camber gain, easiest to show on the rear, is how much your tire changes camber through its travel. So if through your travel, and this is all kind of adjusted by these links as well, the height of the link. So on the Kyosho at least, uh, dropping the link on the tower so lower is gonna give you more camber gain, like two degrees more than where it's at right now in the middle. So like every hole is about two degrees more or different of camber gain. So possibly dropping the link to get it to camber in more during the travel could also help through the bumps because you go through a corner, your car is setting, you're turning right, the car is setting down here, and as you're deeper into the travel and having to wait over there, having it a little bit further over could, all, again, help skip over the bumps and not catch edges as much. So that's something to consider. And then shorter links. So shortening the link can speed up all this action. So it'll camber gain quicker and do everything quicker if it's shorter. So that's also a possibility for a rough track. Uh, it can make the car looser though, so that kind of depends if you want to free up the car a little bit as well. And, but that's a consideration to make. The shorter link does seem to help a little bit in the rough. And then going back to a video that I've done before, you have the foams and using either a used foam that's a bit softer or putting the holes in the foam and adding extra ones like this five pattern that I have, the five dice versus the center. So adding more holes to make it even softer, especially if you're using a new foam. That's all things that'll really help on a rough track, loose track, get you a little bit more grip. I could also look at my uh, tire video and see like cutting the wheel a little bit, softening that up. So these are all considerations to make uh, if you're going on a really rough track and loose. Now to really quickly talk about if the track's kind of high bite and rough. So this kind of happens at the current Silver State location at the South Point Hotel and Casino. So what happens is that they're watering throughout the weekend and the track's getting rougher and rougher. But then as the mains start to come along, they stop watering as much and the, the, it's very sandy and it almost makes it like a sandpaper surface. So the track's already got blown out. It's already got really rough, but now you have like this sandpaper, really high grip on the flat sections. So then for me, uh, it's kind of like a, a pick and choose. Uh, my setup with like the 515 holes, it's going to dump too much. The, the lighter sway bars, it's going to dump too much. So then it's kind of almost the, the Mayfield type setup helps a lot where you're actually really picking your lines, really kind of driving around a lot of the rough. You kind of want to avoid it as much as you can. Um, but then I also, I'll go back to like the 8-hole-1-3 pistons because I feel like they don't dump as quickly. They're a little bit slower. And I feel like for the higher grip, that'll help just keep the car and allow me to put it where I want it. I feel like if it's too soft and too rolly, then the car will do unpredictable things. I don't know where it's going all the time and I can't predict it so much. And so I want it to be as predictable as possible so I, the driver, can put the car where I need to put it on the track in the line that I want it. And I can go through the bumps that I know I can get through and then the ones that I want to go around, I can go around them because I know what the car is doing and I, I can predict it. So that's the difference that I'll make if the track's actually higher bite and rough. Uh, I kind of compromise a little bit. I'll kind of go back up on those diffs a little bit and make it more about my line choice than driving versus trying to just make it all about driving through it. Sometimes they're just so rough that you just can't do that. And one last thing, I did forget this, uh, is ride height. You can definitely go up on your ride height on a rough track. So that little bit higher ride height will help absorb bumps. You know, I, I had some testing that I really did when I first jumped with Kyosho at the DNC track in California. And I went way higher on the ride height. I went up to like 29 and 31, or 28 and 31. Uh, as long as you don't, I feel like if you don't go past bones level, as long as the bones are at least level or below, I guess the, the rear can be a tiny bit above, but the front, you don't want it to be above level, so at max level. Uh, if you go above that, you kind of don't know where the car is going to go. But on the rear, you can go a little bit above it, and I felt like up to 30 was good, and it, it almost made some of the bumps disappear. It just, the way it would go over it, it would absorb it better because you have more travel to absorb it. Uh, the concession there is you probably would have to go up on sway bar a little bit because you have more travel if you're starting higher, you have more travel to go through. And if the sway bar is too light, that can kind of make 
erratic movements. And so going up on that sway bar can kind of help it smooth out, kind of stay a little bit flatter, but still have that bump handling. So I hope that helps. I hope I wasn't confusing and I hope you can do better the next time you go to a rough track, some things to think about, to consider with your setup. And I hope you guys enjoy. Enjoy RC. We'll catch you next time. Bye-bye. No.